Um, you said that the experience of awareness is common to all of us and we are the same at this level. But obviously there is a difference. So despite name and form, there's a difference between us. What is the difference? The name and form. <laughs> I, I doubt that. It's, I, there Let's is do an experiment. Imagine that each of us now had, uh, um, first of all, just take an, imagine everyone has an iPhone or a smartphone and we all take an image of what we are now seeing. And we print out the image and we exhibit, what is it, a, a hundred or so images, we exhibit them on the wall. Not a single image would be the same. And now imagine that we had a kind of magical camera. No doubt Apple will develop this over the years, that, that not only can take a snapshot of our current perception, but can also register our sensations. And not only our sensations, but can take a snapshot of our thoughts. So it's a kind of multimedia camera. Now, each of you take a snapshot now with this multimedia camera of your entire experience. And, and we make a kind of multidimensional multimedia image, like a holographic image of what each of us is thinking, feeling, sensing and perceiving in this moment. And then we exhibit these holograms in the hall outside. They'd all be totally different. Yeah? Now, take the same camera. Turn the camera around the other way and take a snapshot of whatever it is that is knowing this multi-dimensional multimedia image. And then we print it out and we exhibit a hundred pieces of paper with an image of that which knows, which we call I, the I that is aware of thoughts, sensations and perceptions. There'd be a hundred pieces of identical, hundred identical pieces of paper. just to push the, the um, analogy a little bit further. With the first image that we took, the, the image of thoughts, sensations and perceptions, everything that we photographed would have a limit to it. It would have a shape, a color, a form, a size, a length. A... But when we turn the camera the other way and take the snapshot of the knowing element, the aware element in all experience. Not only is there no objective content there, but there's no limit there. So it wouldn't be a hundred pieces of paper because each paper has a limit. Each of us would photograph or see this unlimited <coughs> emptiness, this unlimited aware emptiness. Now, how many unlimited aware emptinesses can there be? Well, one. One. There are not seven billion unlimited aware emptinesses. There are not 100 unlimited aware emptinesses. There are not two unlimited aware emptinesses. There, there is one. That recognition is the experience of love. It is the recognition of our shared, of our infinite shared being, known in religious language as God's infinite being, whose Christian name is I, or I am. And that is shining now in each of us, in each of our experience, just as the experience of being aware.
but how comes that you know that from yourself, from your, from your own experience, and can, can explain this from the, from the root, and we cannot. It seems that there is a different access to this topic, which I don't share. And that If I ask I you the question, are you aware? What is your response? Yes. Are you telling me that... So, in that pause between my question, are you aware, and your answer, yes, you have direct access to the experience of being aware. Yes. It didn't take you long to answer yes, so the access must be pretty direct. Do you feel that you have less access to that than I do? I don't know if the, the level of awareness... Which There are no are levels of awareness. There can only be a level in something that has a limit. Well, There are levels of mind. From, from my experience, when I wake up in the morning, my level of awareness is not so, <laughs> not so great. Or when my children wake me up at night. So when, I, when my children wake me up at night. So the level of awareness when I'm tapping down in their, in their room is, is not very high. And when my woman asked me at the, name, the, the next morning, how often did you wake up tonight? I can't even count sometimes. Uh, so my, my awareness seems uh, at different levels sometimes. No, And you're talking about the finite mind. You're talking about the mind. I'm talking about awareness, the knowing element in the mind. It doesn't fall asleep at night. It doesn't wake up in the morning. You, awareness, don't wake up in the morning. Do you dream at night? Yes. Are you aware of your dreams? Mainly I forget them, but yes. No, but uh, when you're yes. having the dream, yes. are you aware of it? Yes. Then was awareness asleep while, you were, while it was aware of your dreams? No. Awareness is wide awake in the night. It doesn't fall asleep. It doesn't wake up. Awareness doesn't transition through states. States transition through awareness. So the difference is something in the mind. Yes. That the instrument of the mind. The, 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 and the mind itself is... It, the, the mind is not something that is separate from awareness. The mind is simply a modulation of awareness. It, forgive me for introducing my favorite metaphor. <laughs> Because it, it's, it, it, it's such a good metaphor. It, it's, the mind is to awareness what the image is to the screen. It's not, you can't have a screen and an image. The, the, the essential nature of the screen is empty, colorless, but it has the capacity to, to assume the form of all images. So it is consciousness that has the capacity to assume the form of the finite mind and appear as thoughts and perceptions. In other words, to appear to itself as the mind, the body, and the world. So it, it just as a, an, the unlimited screen assumes the form of images and appears as something other than itself, the colorless screen appears as the landscape. And as the landscape, it seems to veil itself. So consciousness itself freely assumes the form of the finite mind and as such appears as thought and perception. That is the mind, the body and the world. And w w as it freely assumes the form of the finite mind, it seems to veil itself from itself. <coughs> But in fact it is, it is hidden in all experience. It is totally out in the open. The only substance there is to the mind, that is to thought and perception, is consciousness. It is consciousness. It is infinite consciousness modulating itself in the numerous forms of each of our finite minds. When you explain this, this doesn't sound like 
um, um, recapitulation of something you have learned? No. It's, it's something from your experience? Yes. And the experience-based explanation you just gave is something which I, I don't find by myself. And well, to, to um, uh, to, to encourage you, I should point out that I didn't find it by myself either. I, I, I had the help of a friend who can, or a friend or friends, but a, a friend in particular who, 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 who challenged at every step my assumptions and my beliefs my world view it challenged everything and the challenges threw me further and further back into my own experience and and gradually my the the truth or the reality of my experience came clear to me through this process and that's the process we're engaged in now What happens if you turn your attention towards the experience of being aware? I, I use the word "turn your attention" in, in a in a loose way. If you well, the the first thing that happened uh, when you when you made this uh, exercise was my my thoughts <laughs> shut off and my um, present in the moment r rose. Yeah. So it was like being more in the now yeah. without thinking of something else. So yes. I, I, had, I had the impression that my awareness would increase. Uh, okay, it, it, that, it's, it's perfectly legitimate to say it like that. It, your awareness didn't increase, but it ceased being obscured by your thoughts, and therefore it seemed mm -hmm. to increase. Okay. Makes sense, yeah. So it, the experience that you've just described could reasonably give you the feeling that your awareness increases and decreases. In fact, it's not. It's the level of obscuration that increases and decreases. Some feelings have the, seem to have the capacity to obscure awareness completely. For instance, a deep depression. It's like a black image on a screen. It seems to obliterate the screen. Whereas other experiences, the feeling of being in love, seem to shine with our essential nature. It's just like a white image on the screen. Neither a white image or a black image veil the screen, veil or reveal the screen any more than the other unless we give it permission to do so. If we believe that the black image veils the screen and the white image reveals the screen, then that's how those images will seem to be. But only because we believe it to be like that. But if we really look, the black image, the white image, and all the colorful images in between, none of them have any real veiling power. Why? Because all there is to the image is the screen. All there is to experience is the consciousness of it, the knowing of it. Consciousness is shining in all experience. It's singing in all experience. But because we have been hypnotized by the objective content we think, oh, awareness is missing. We, it's, it's buried somewhere in the background of experience and we have to go off and look for it and it's varying. Sometimes it's more of it and sometimes there's less of it. No, there's always the same amount of it, which is the, the total fullness of it all the time. So full, in fact, that there's no room in experience for anything other than its totally full presence. I mean, have you ever experienced anything other than the knowing of experience.
Has anybody here ever experienced anything other than the knowing of experience? Have any of the seven billion of us ever experienced anything other than the knowing of experience? And let's include all the animals, the fish and the fleas and the cats and all the people that lived in the past. Have any of the trillions of us that have ever lived, any, ever known anything other than the knowing of experience? No. All that is known is knowing. All that is known is consciousness. It is consciousness itself that is modulating it itself, that is assuming the form of the finite mind and appearing as a world. And then it seems to be hidden in the world. But it's not. It, it's, it's shining in the world. It's not in the world. It, an object called a world ne never never exists independently, it never comes into existence. Existence means to stand out from. The world never stands out from consciousness and becomes an object in its own right. It is all just consciousness, knowing itself either as itself or in the form of the body-mind world. It's either the screen when the movie's on or it's the screen when the movie's off. But it's always just the screen. The screen itself never undergoes any change. But it has the capacity to modulate itself in the form of all changes, to assume infinite names and forms. That is consciousness. That is you. You are that infinite one that is freely assuming limitations. What's your name? Manfred. Manfred, Manfred. sorry, I remember. Manfred. It, it, is, it is infinite consciousness that is freely assuming the form of an infinite number, of an innumerable number of finite minds, one of, one of which is called Manfred. Manfred. Manfred is just one of the names of this temporary localization of consciousness through which consciousness brings into existence part of its infinite potential. And Rupert is the name, Linda, Susanna, Lars. Uh, all, these are all different names of precipitations. All these precipitations, all these finite minds are precipitated in the same field, out of the same field, but they're never really out of the same field because the, the finite mind never leaves consciousness. There's nowhere else to go in experience. There is no outside consciousness. It is consciousness itself that modulates itself in the form of all these finite minds. As the finite mind, they are different because each finite mind has a different name. It's a different form. So if we compare the level of, if we compare the minds, the bodies, and the, they are different. There are differences there, but the stuff they are made of is the same stuff. You take a take a just to push my metaphor of the, the TV screen, you take this screen, but it's, it's an enormous screen, vast screen, it has no limits, it goes on forever. And there's not just one movie playing on it, but imagine now that there are two movies playing on it. You've got the news playing on one half, and, and, and you've got um, Ajax uh, uh, playing Eindhoven on the other half. You know? uh, so you've got two images, but they're appearing on the scre same screen totally different images, but the stuff they're made of, and if you run your finger across the screen, you don't find a line there. The line is in the appearance, in the name and the form, but the stuff is never s divided into two different minds, two different images. Now, this is a, an enormous screen. It's not just assuming the form of two images, it's the, assuming the form of seven billion images. There is like, like a night watchman's um, screen, he's got cameras all, all, all around the, the bank, he's looking at all different corners, uh, yeah, all appearing on the same screen. Well, consciousness is like an infinite screen and there are seven billion movies playing on it. Sometimes the movie in some of the squares is blank, they're, they're deeply asleep. There's no image playing there. And in other, Im each, each little cube on this screen, there's something different on each one. Some of them are very colorful, some of them are more monotone, monochrome, some 
something different. Every image, is every single one is different. But if you run your finger across them, you, the screen is not divided amongst the appearances. It's one infinite presence, freely assuming the forms, the names and forms, and therefore freely assuming limitations in order to manifest its infinite potential and appearing to itself as a multiplicity and diversity of experience. This is not a screen that is being watched by someone sitting on the sofa. The screen is self-aware. The screen is watching all the movies that is playing on it. I, I know the truth of your words from some extraordinary experiences I had myself for short times. I know that this is true. Um, however, in, in normal life and in, in the, in the body-mind state I am now, this insight is not accessible to me. And therefore I was asking the question where you find the difference between you, you and me. I, I know that on the intellectual level. However, the, the access to that knowledge is in the moment shut up in me. Okay, but, but when I ask you, are you aware, you, you say yes. That comes from your experience. You, we've established you and I, neither of us have more or less access to that experience. If, if Hitler was sitting on one side of you and Ramana Maharshi was sitting on the other side, um, <laughs> and we asked them both the same question, Ramana Maharshi would answer very quickly, yes. <laughs> Hitler might take a little bit longer because he, he may not have considered these matters before, but, but if, he, if he thought, am I aware? He goes, yeah, I am. He, he, Ramana Maharshi doesn't have more access to that experience than Hitler has, or that you or I or anybody else. If you could ask your dog the same question, know what you mean, yeah. if your dog could understand the question, the dog would check its experience and say, yes, I am aware, a dog is... Aware. And then it would go, woof. And it would, yeah, it would... It, no, wh why is this true? Wh why is this absolutely true? Because when I say, are you aware? It seems to begin with that I'm pointing to, are you Manfred? aware and are you Linda aware and I it, it in other words it seems that there is an entity called Manfred that is aware that there's an entity called Giovanni that is aware that there's an entity called Rupert or Linda or Susanna that is aware no only awareness is aware the body is not aware awareness is aware so when I ask you the question, are you aware? I'm speaking to awareness. I'm saying to awareness, are you awareness, aware? Well, what does awareness have to do to know that it is aware? Nothing. So when I, whether I'm talking to you or to Ramana Maharshi or to Hitler or, or, or to my son or to my dog or whoever, it, I'm speaking to, to the one that hears. I'm speaking to awareness. It, it, it's always the same awareness. So the, the answer is always the same yes. Awareness doesn't have to do something special to know I am aware. In fact, it has to do something special to know something other than the experience of being aware. It has to rise in the form of the mind and appear as the world in order to know an object. But to know itself, it doesn't have to rise in the form of the mind. The, the knowing of its own being is its most intimate, familiar, primary, ever-present experience. In other words, awareness always has direct access to its own being. And that is why each of us answers yes to that question so readily. If you think about it, it's the only question about which there can be absolutely no doubt. Because it's the only question, or any, any other version of that question, such as, who am I? Or, because it's, it's the only question, or versions of the same question, that take us to the non-objective experience 
and there can be no differences between something in something that is non-objective. There can only be one non-objective reality. Everything else that we discuss in other, that is at the level of the mind, we can disagree about it. And indeed, we all know what it's like. Uh, at the level of the mind, uh, the potential for disagreement and differences is, is endless. There's all, we can never be sure we're talking about the same thing at the level of the mind. But we can be absolutely certain when we're speaking about awareness alone, when we speak about that which shines in each of us as the knowledge I am. Whether you're a Hindu, a Muslim, a Taliban, a, a criminal, a saint, a dog, whatever you are, that experience that shines in us as the knowledge I am is identical. And it's the only experience that we all share. In fact, right now, it's the only experience that we're all truly sharing. The reason we think we're sharing the world is because it is our shared consciousness that is assuming the form of a hundred different finite minds. And in each of those different finite minds, there it's consciousness itself that's assuming the form of a hundred different perceptions. The perceptions, we think we're seeing the perception of the same world. No, it's because the perception comes from the same consciousness that we feel we share the same world. Our perceptions don't meet. The perception that you're having now and the perception I'm having now don't touch each other. They don't know each other. Why do we feel that we're sharing the world when two perceptions can never meet? It's because each of our perceptions is informed by the same consciousness. It is consciousness that we share, not the world. I'm completely uprooting the materialist paradigm on which our world culture is founded. 